الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضله فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي ساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصيهما فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا All well, praise belongs to Allah we praise him we seek his help we ask for his forgiveness we believe in him and we rely upon him we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our own selves and the consequences of our bad actions whoever Allah guides there is no one to misguide and whoever he leaves to stray there is no one to guide that person i bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except for Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and messenger he sent him as a giver of glad tidings as well as a warner ahead of the day of judgment Whoever obeys Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is indeed rightly guided whoever disobeys them harms themselves only and not Allah in the least Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun you who believe be conscious of Allah as it is his right and devote yourselves to him until your dying moment and he says ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidah wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa wa taqullaha alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba Mankind, be conscious of your Lord who created you from a single soul. From it created its partner. From the two of them spread many men and women. Be conscious of Allah in whose name you demand your mutual rights and protect the ties of kinship. Indeed, Allah is ever watching over you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah wa qoolu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'amalakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yuta'illah wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan azeema. You who believe be conscious of Allah and speak the truth directly. He will rectify your actions for you and forgive your sins. Whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will have indeed earned a great victory. Sometimes we should consider the question and ask ourselves, what is it that I really want? What is it that I want above anything else? My ultimate desire, my main goal, my ultimate objective. And many of us when we think about it and we reflect upon it, if we are conscientious believers then we will say that we want the pleasure of Allah. we want to enter into paradise and of course these are amongst the highest of objectives but the highest objective or the highest uh, or the moment that drives and motivates the believer beyond all other moments is a moment described by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in the quran and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once was sitting with some of his companions and there was a full moon and he said you will certainly see your lord just as you see this full moon You will certainly see your Lord just as you see this full moon and you will not be crowded together in such a way that would such as to block your vision. It is not that it will be just because there are so many people it will not be that some people's view will be blocked. <coughs> Everybody will have a clear view or the believers will have a clear view of Allah in paradise. And then he said, "So if you can avoid missing the prayer before the rising of the sun and before it's setting, then make sure you make sure to do so." Make sure you don't miss your fajr and asr prayers and these two specifically were highlighted as the two that typically cause us trouble one because we are too sleepy and the other one because we're too busy so the fajr and asr prayers he then recited wasabbih bihamdi rabbika qabla tulu'i ash-shamsi wa qabla al-ghurub glorify at the praises of your lord exalt your lord with praise before the rising of the sun and before its setting in another hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that once the believers have been entered into paradise they will be asked do you desire anything more and they will say our lord have you not brightened our faces entered us into paradise and saved us from the hell fire but then the veil will be lifted and they will gaze upon the countenance of their lord and they will not have experienced anything that is more delightful or dearer to them than that and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam recited the verses lil ladina ahsan al husna wa ziyada that for people of ihsan is al husna is paradise wa ziyada but there's something more Ziyada means an increase, a bonus, something on top. And all of the commentators mentioned that this ziyada is the ability to meet and see Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the status of people or the people who are the true lovers of Allah are the ones who desire that point in time. Paradise without the meeting with Allah. Think about that for a second. Is it that we desire paradise but we're not necessarily interested in meeting Allah? Well isn't that just an extension then of our material desire 
Paradise is a massive incentive. It is a blessing for the believers. It is Allah's great reward. But the true reward, the true objective, is the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself. And Allah says, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا Who has this? The people of Ihsan and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to bring it all together. So the Ihsan is that you worship Allah as though you see Him. That is the aspiration, that is the standard. To be in this life with your Lord as though you see Him. So that in the next life, you actually get to see Him. And when you get to see Him, after that, it's closure. Everything is over. You have a full and clear perspective of what this was all about. But if we go through this life oblivious of our Lord, forgetting Him, prioritizing other than Him, when the time to stand in front of Him comes, then why should we expect that, let alone paradise? So let us become people who combine the fear of Allah with hope in Allah, but with love of Allah. Who worship Allah in this life as though we see Him. Truly grateful for all our blessings. Truly grateful for everything He has given us. Understanding the opportunity and the challenge ahead of us as well. That as believers, there is a high price and there is a high standard. To close, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ that in exchange for paradise, if you want paradise, he names the price. What is the price of paradise? Have you ever thought of that? If we don't know the price, how do we know we'll have enough to give? Right? The entry ticket is clear. He says that Allah has exchanged the wealth, the resources, and the very selves, the souls of the believers, in exchange for paradise. So what is the price of paradise? Everything. Give it all up for Allah. Give it all up for Allah. Every moment, make it a moment of remembrance. Every action, make it an action of devotion. Every word, make it a word to remember and to recollect and to raise His name in this life. In your homes, in your heart, in your homes, in your community, in your society. This is the purpose of the believers. And with that, I remind myself and you. I seek Allah's forgiveness for myself, for you, for all of the believers. Seek His forgiveness. He's the most forgiving, the most merciful. Astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayuhal ladheen amun sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. That Allah and His angels send blessings upon the Prophet. You who believe invoke His blessings upon him and convey to him your utmost greetings. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allah send your blessings of peace upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad. As you did upon Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. Indeed you are worthy of all praise and all glory. Our Lord, give us goodness in this life, goodness in the hereafter. Save us from the punishment of the fire. Our Lord, forgive our sins, expiate our mistakes, and cause us to die amongst the righteous. Our Lord, give us everything that is good, that which is near and that which is far, that which we know and that which we don't. And save us from all that is evil, that which is near and that which is far, that which we know and that which we don't. Servants of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'id al qurba. That Allah enjoins justice and being excellent, and being generous to one's relatives. And he forbids immorality, wrongdoing, and oppression. He teaches and warns you so that you will take heed. So remember Allah, and He will remember you. Call upon Him, and He will respond to you. And know that remembering Him is the best thing that you can do in this life. And Allah knows everything that we do. Let us pray, inshaAllah.